Hey, we're fantastic. We're free. Kara, we're inside a Russian airbase in the middle of Afghanistan. At least we're together. John Rice Davis once again shows what a powerful character actor he is. Originally, General Pushkin was to have been General Goebel, the recurring character in the series played by Walter Cattell. He appeared as a character in every film since The Spy Who Loved Me, along with a part in From Russia With Love. But at the time, he was ill and the film was unable to insure him for the shoot. Cattell ended up filming a short cameo at the end of the film. It marked the final appearance of the character. I take it that this is not a social call, 007. Correct. You should have brought lilies. Davis and Dalton are both great in this one tense scene between them. Dalton really sells the new image of Bond as a tough, brooding assassin who would kill you as easily as anything, and could do it. Him ripping the clothes off Pushkin's lady friend is a pretty rough, ruthless act. Politeness is out the window, anything to get the job done. Bond's CIA buddy Felix Leiter once again shows up briefly and trades information with Bond. This time out, Felix is played by John Terry. When re-watching this, I suddenly realize it's Jack's father from Lost. But I'll talk more about the character of Felix in a little while. Of course, Bond eventually ends up captured after he's betrayed by Kara. He's done in by his dry martini. They're taken to an Afghan airbase. The Afghan airbase climax is set up pretty nicely and plays out as one of those classic Bond climaxes. You know, a lot of good guys fighting the bad guys with explosions going off all around them. This time though, instead of a giant volcano set or an elaborate palace in India, it's all done in a more realistic setting. The airbase segues into probably one of the most impressive aerial sequences the series has done. After Bond escapes with Kara in the cargo plane, it's time he faces Necros. I mean, everyone knew it was coming. I love how the filmmakers take advantage of that cargo door throughout the whole sequence. It's like they figured we have this thing, what are all the things we can use it for? First using it to allow Kara to reunite with Bond. Then during Bond and Necros' fight when it inadvertently opens, these guys fall out of it dangling onto a cargo net, all the while continuing to fight and hold on. Plus another classic Bond device, the ticking bomb. It throws another piece of suspense on the scene. Really cool stuff. I know these stuntmen were wearing parachutes under their clothes and all that when filming the scene, but it's pretty well hidden. Finally, the door comes into play again as Bond and Kara exit the plane in a jeep for a smooth escape before Bond closes the scene with a casual line as if it's all in the day's work. The model work with the plane is really good and meshes in seamlessly with the live action. Bond's final face-off with Whitaker feels somewhat routine after what has just come before it. But it's a scene that needed to take place to see the villain get his comeuppance. Overall, this is a pretty good film. Despite a few things I'm not crazy about, this was a successful darker change to the series for me. A lot of the success of it has to go to Dalton. He really morphs the character into this gritty secret agent and quickly makes you forget the comical aspects that were played up in recent years. Along with his performance as Bond, there is an odd thing I like about Dalton. And it might sound weird, but I always thought he looked very cool in his clothes. This time out, they made Bond a bit more casual, and he's not constantly in a suit or tux the whole time. And Dalton looks cool in those, but he can also pull off looking comfortable in his jumpsuit, or relaxed desert khakis, or his winter outfit. They all just look appropriate for him. The last Bond actor who I thought could do that was Connery. He could pull off wearing anything and sell it, then he could easily change right into a tux. I mean, Moore looked fine in his suits, but that was about it. The other outfits he wore looked like costumes. Lazenby was alright, even in his kilt, but Dalton really pulls off wearing all these different types of clothes. I don't know, maybe it's me. Anyway, Dalton's performance was praised by a lot of critics, and the fact he performed many of the stunts himself lent the film an authenticity that recent outings had lacked. The film was a box office success, grossing $191 million like worldwide. Some people complain the film takes itself too seriously. While I can see there is a definite lack of levity in it compared to past films, I think that was the point. 
After years of Roger Moore's humor in the series and criticisms that his films were too juvenile, I would think the dramatic change is what the series needed. But maybe it was just too much for some fans. I guess you just can't please everyone. But if The Living Daylights was branded as too serious and dark for a Bond film, it would pale in comparison to what was coming next.